Hi everyone, welcome to Truth Prevail. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, um, what I think um, about the upcoming Harry and Meghan docuseries. Um, ultimately, I am encouraging you to watch it. I hope you watch it, and I hope you watch it with an open mind. Um, why am I even creating this? Why are we talking about this? I believe, personally, I believe that there is a negative media there's a media hate campaign against Meghan and Harry um and why 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 is there a, a hate campaign against them uh i have my thoughts i believe that it is related to the um to the royal family um but again we won't know for sure until you watch it um now, why am I talking about this? I'm not based in the UK. I was not born in the UK. I believe that some of us who, um, a lot of people who have been talking about this are people based in the UK or people who were born in the UK, people who love the royal family. But I feel like sometimes we that aren't in the royal, you know, uh, who aren't royalists, who were not born in the UK and barely know anything about the royal family, also have a perspective that I think that it's worth it's worth it to hear. Um, for me, I feel like everyone's the same. You know, we're all equal. Um, yes, there's a hierarchy and everything, and everybody understands that. But I don't feel like anyone should be should feel uncomfortable or feel like they need to kill themselves or something like that because of it. So I just feel like there's certain things that I know are tradition, but we're in the 21st century, and I believe that you know. Um, the monarchy can be modernized and still, you know, exist. Um, now, why is it important um, to even talk about this? Um, I personally believe that hating on someone who is being wrongly accused of lying, or my, I, I personally feel like sometimes she is harassed. I mean, she is harassed by the media. There was a time they were publishing like 20 to 25 stories about her. And a lot of the things that they were publishing, the headline didn't match what was in the article. And most people don't even read the article. You just read this headline that makes her seem like a bully, a horrible person who's always complaining and crying and things like that. And I just feel like after watching the Deb V. Heard trial and realizing that the same players, the same people who published negative articles about Johnny Depp are the same people publishing negative articles about Meghan Markle, I, I'm not just going to take the media's word for it. I am going to try to listen to all sides and come up with my own opinion. Just like it's wrong, I feel like it's wrong uh, to victimize Johnny Depp, who has already suffered a lot, not his fault, that he met the wrong woman, uh, Amber Heard. I feel like they should, the truth, you know, why silence the truth? Bring it all out and then let everybody know what's going on. Um, why do I feel like there are similarities uh, between Johnny Depp and Meghan Markle? S situations, um, the planting stories, the leaking stories, and I do believe that those are true. And I will publish uh, in this video, you will see like video clips of why I believe that there are leaking. You know, people say that the royal family don't speak. There's a don't complain, don't explain. Uh, but there are always insiders that are speaking and they're people who have said, well, the royal family are the ones that gave us the story. We didn't just lie. They gave us the story. They literally sent it to us to, to print it. And obviously, it's so much easier for them to blame anything uncomfortable on racism, rather than actually address the fact that much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family. The royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press. He was in the Truman Show, big headline, Truman Show. No, he was fed that line and then he repeated it. Yeah. So there was a lot as, that's very unfair. It's, there's, there's stuff um, uh, today about him saying that um, the Constitution of America is bonkers. It, it was, I've, if you listen to the podcast, yeah. it's all part of what he's talking about. Yeah. I thought he was incredibly eloquent over mental health. Mm. And I went into that podcast thinking, oh, Harry, do shut up. Yeah. And came out of it thinking, good on you. 
Good on you. He's got. He's perfectly entitled, isn't he, to talk about his life and to be very candid when but it he, comes to his he own also mental said health. He's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't, <clears> because no matter what he says, he'll either he, the, the, the headlines are cruel. There is no support really for him whatsoever. Uh, yes, I understand that he's you know he's done what he's done, and there are times when perhaps what's been said was not wise and you don't want to upset uh, 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 your grandmother uh, because she has just buried her husband. Um, but you can't talk about mental health without talking about your background. No, and no, I think but I think the way that it was couched, I mean, you may think that it was taken out of context and of course... You not can't, out of context, you I just, can't listen I just think to a whole hour and then, quoted. Possibly, but then if you're also, from a journalistic point of view, getting briefings from inside the palace saying that key people were really hurt and offended... Allegedly. There's well, so much. There's so much is British. allegedly. We don't know what to believe now. Let's just. I think it was quite. That, to me, that's a plan. That's like basically confessing and saying this is what happened. So basically, what Harry said, he's not lying. They were planting stories, you know. So I just feel like those are things that a lot of people didn't know, or you know, they just didn't know or didn't believe was true. Um, and I just feel like um, I don't want to play the media's game. I also was influenced at some point and started thinking why is she, why is Megan why is Megan Markle always speaking why is she always complaining what is the problem what what's her problem right and then I realized that she's only given one interview if you consider the the one in Africa with ITV two interviews but because the media keeps saying it over and over um it's kind of like the whole Hitler uh method of propaganda and David Goebbels, basically saying, if you keep saying something over and over, eventually people will start to believe it as truth. And it's on everybody's timeline. Even when you're reading a different story, it's on the corner of your eye, right there in Daily Mail, because they've got 20 to 25 articles a day printed by her, about her. I feel like there's like that feeling like, oh my gosh, she's always complaining. But no, she's only had one interview. The archetype is not about the royal family. It's about, yes, yeah, she mentioned the parts where, you know, her life overlaps with theirs. But archetype is not about them. It's about her. And yet, you know, everything she says is considered complaining. She's talking about her own life and sharing it to hopefully educate other people. So I just feel like, you know, I don't want to play the media's game. And I know a lot of people don't want to be fooled. You don't want to feel like you're being brainwashed. And you don't want to feel like um, you're playing someone else's game. Who's going to believe Dan Wooden? We know what he did to Johnny Depp. Who's going to believe the son? We know what they did to Johnny Depp. So why are we believing them when it comes to Meghan Markle? How else would you get the information? They're not always on screen. The information is coming from the media. So now, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention as to why I think it was, it's very easy for the media to go after both Johnny Depp and Meghan Markle is that they don't, they, like, they don't play the game. <laughs> they don't play the media game. So, you know, some people already know exactly how to do, the, uh, what to do and you know, what to do to keep the media happy, right? Whatever that thing is, both people aren't doing that, you know. Um, number two, you know, uh, Meghan Markle isn't Kate. She doesn't smile like Kate. She doesn't look like Kate. She's not acting like Kate. And I'm not talking about race or anything. I'm just saying that they have two different personalities. And the media zooms in on that and just goes in. Why is she holding her belly? Why is she holding her baby this way? And people, you know, after a while of just seeing that this is weird and this is weird, people kind of like get onto it and go, yeah, this is weird. They did the same thing with Johnny Depp when he um, did uh, the Rolling Stone interview. That was something they did. Basically just going over how after the interview he did this or he did that or even during the interview he did this or did that. So I feel like, um, yeah, I don't want to be a pawn. I'm hoping you're not, you know, no one wants to be a pawn in media's game, obviously. Um, now, in terms of their grifting by telling their story over and over, I've told my life story a million times to a million people. It's my life story. I should be able to tell it. You know, um, they're grifting. If Netflix comes to me and tell, tells me that they'll pay me a hundred million dollars to tell my life story, I won't even think about it. The answer is yes. Where, where, here's my pen. Where's the paper? Let's sign. You know, so a lot, you know, it's... It's, <laughs> they're people. They're not making money from the taxpayers. So they can't just sit in their homes and expect money to come in. They can't just wear beautiful dresses and go out with tiaras or whatever. They have to actually work. 
And so if Netflix is saying, hey, tell me what happened in your life, and I'll give you money, I don't know. Personally, I don't see any problem with it. Um, yeah. Plus, the media. The media goes to, you know, they basically defame them and make money off of it. The media is monetizing defamation of, in my opinion, defamation of Harry and Meghan um, all the time. This is, they, see, they, they invite experts that have never met them who do not know what their personality is. And these people say, yeah, I, yeah, Megan would have felt this way. Harry would have felt this way. How would you know? You don't know them. You've never met them. So, and these people are on TV every day. There's a Camilla person and somebody else. And they go on TV every day. And, you know, the queen must have been devastated. She had to have been devastated. How would you know? You know, so it's stuff like this that basically is like, no, you make money. You're writing books. They're, you're basically writing their biographies and you're making money off of it. And you're telling them that they don't have a right to write their own biography and make money off of it. And I think that that's wrong. Okay, so there are concerns that Harry and Meghan um, could ruin uh, the monarchy, you know, the royal family, and that everything's going to go away. And I don't believe that that's true. They don't have that power. The only people who have the power to do that are the people within the royal family, the people of the kingdom, basically, uh, in the palace. Um, I feel like they have that power to make or break. Harry and Meghan have the right to tell their truth. Why do they want to tell their truth? Because they've been defamed. What people think about them, a lot of people are like, oh, she's so manipulative. She's so this, she's so that. I'm not saying she's not, but why not get the story from her? Full story, not the, you know, interview uh, with Oprah that wasn't complete it wasn't long enough it didn't have you know uh, videos pictures emails text message whatever it is that they're going to present at the in the docu series it doesn't have all of that this was well thought out it wasn't just a quick interview it's something that has been in the works for a while um, it was a hundred hundred million dollar uh, deal so there are gonna be some troops that will come out my thing is, why wouldn't you want to hear it? I'm playing. I hope you guys all watch it because I feel like you deserve to know if she really is what you think she is or if she's not. I feel like, you know, you have, of course, everybody has a right to wanting to know or not wanting to know. The media wants to know and they're panicking. Um, so I feel like if the media doesn't want you to know, that's more of a reason why I think you should try to watch it. Um, if, uh, the, if when the truths come out, if the royal family deny things that are backed by evidence, they will ruin their own integrity. That's the only way that the royal family can be ruined is if that's what I'm saying that Harry and Meghan do not have the power to do it, but the people in the, you know, in the palace, they do. How, to, how, how, they, um, how they handle this. If they do, if they decide to go on the um, opposing, like uh, opposing team as rivals to bash them and send insiders and royal experts and sources to bash them in the media, after all this comes out, I don't think it's gonna be a good look for them. I feel like right now they don't have a good PR team to advise them on what to do. In my opinion, the best way to handle something like this without telling Megan and Harry they need to shut up and be silent forever um, is to not give it, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't make a big deal out of it. When they come to you and say, well, Megan and Harry, they're doing this, it's unfair, just tell them they have a right to speak. What do you think about it? My thoughts aren't important, you know? You've already watched it, that's it. I feel like that's a good way to deal with it. Now, if there are big issues that need to be addressed by the palace, don't sweep it under the rug, you know? Make a statement, um, talk about how basically she has a right to speak. If she speaks again, that's not a problem, that's her right. I think they need to keep doing that and reaffirm the fact that these are members of our family and we understand that they're speaking, which is their right. Basically take the sting out of it. 
I feel like once you take the sting out of it, then the media doesn't know what to do. The public will accept what you have, which is, this is not a big deal. She's speaking. If you want to listen to it, listen to it. If you don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. If there's something to be addressed, address it in a, in a you know responsible manner and then move on from it. But if you make a big deal out of it and you have a million sources telling the um, media how upset you are and how you're going to take Archie and Lily Beth off the, you know, the, I don't know what it's called, but off of the um, line of succession. You know, it's things like that, that you're making a big deal out of it. Just smooth it out. She has a right to speak, just like we have a right to speak. And, um, you know, she can speak today, she can speak tomorrow. She has the right to do that. That way, if Megan speaks again tomorrow, it's not a big deal. Are they going to speak again? Probably, because they're using this to educate. That's the way that, the, you know, Megan and Harry are seeing it. I also wanted to take a moment to mention that, um, yeah, for sure, there are things that we don't know. We don't know some of um, the behind-the-scenes um, events going on that's affecting um, um what's you know what we see so an example is basically um during one of the africa trips i just found this out literally a few weeks ago um uh, that you know um megan markle uh found out after an engagement that um that her son's room caught on fire and at the time she didn't know if um i guess the nanny had taken the baby to a different room something like that. that's my understanding of it and so um, she was freaked out, obviously, naturally. Um, and I believe, again, I could be wrong about this, but hopefully the documentary will make this, this clear. She spoke with that ITV reporter, you know, around that time, and she was crying. And it may have been literally the same day that she just found out that, you know, her son's room caught on fire. Literally, the boy was like a few months old. So, you know, again, I like to listen to all sides and then, you know, that way I know for sure if, you know, what I think is what is real. I believe that there's fake media outrage when it comes to using a certain stock photo or stock video and things like that. And the reason why I say that is there are videos out there, I, I can point to one, of a, a BBC footage uh, talking about um, Meghan Markle's daughter, Lilibeth. But the footage doesn't have Lilibeth in it. It has her carrying Archie. And it was very obvious because Archie had been born, you know, years prior. Archie was born in the UK. The footage was from the UK. Yet the BBC, BBC when they were reporting this, were reporting it using footage of um, Meghan Markle carrying Archie, not Lilibeth. I don't think someone made a mistake. It was very obvious. So I believe that networks know how to use uh, stock footage when they need to. Um, the idea for me behind the whole, you know, those um, pictures, I mean, the picture of the paparazzi is basically... Since they don't have the one, I don't think the paparazzi are like, oh, you want to show us hounding you here? Look, I have one. I don't think they're um, showing pictures or are giving over the pictures from the actual day. And so I feel like all they can use is stuck photo, stuck photo that you can literally just buy that shows, you know, people with cameras. And I think they try to get people's faces like not showing. Um, again, personally, I don't think that that's like, them trying to fool you, you know, the idea is that there are cameras, there are people with cameras, um, um, you know, hounding them. For me, and I believe for many people, um, having Boozy on there is um, not a good idea. It's a problem. I'm not going to let one man ruin my chance of learning other things. I may not trust his own report, but if, there's, uh, if there are other things in there, that I can see the evidence and do my own independent research and trust the sources, then I will believe those things. Um, do I think that they, they you know, I, I feel like it's somebody else. I think so. I don't know if someone's trying to sabotage the docuseries or something, or just someone that trusts Boozy brought him on board. But I feel like, honestly, if they can, they still have time, they can do like a volume three. There's hatred against them online. 
you just have to find someone who's not boozy to present it because he's got his own baggage right now and he there's a lawsuit against him people don't trust him so i believe personally that um yeah he's not a good choice for what they're doing what they need him to do but i'm still going to watch it though i'm going to watch it and like i said if someone knows netflix or knows the couple i think boozy he's bringing his own baggage and bringing down their series a little bit with it um anyways again conclusion please watch it please watch it watch it with an open mind you may be um you may find some interesting new things that could change your perspective or reaffirm what you already believe but at least i think you should give yourself a chance to watch it and see what you believe if after watching it you um you don't like them that's okay if after watching them you like them that's okay um you know that's you know that's how life is there are people i like there are people i don't like and you know even after after seeing the evidence if i don't believe you know so you know if i don't believe someone then i don't believe them um i'm just i guess you know <laughs> trying to um i like i said i i have no pro i i don't have problems with that with them i don't think that they're perfect people but then perfect people do not exist you know there are things that they've done that maybe i wouldn't have done it the same way and there are things that i would have done that they wouldn't have done it doesn't mean that i'm right or they're wrong um but i don't think that harry is a criminal i don't think megan is a criminal i truly believe that they're trying to make a positive difference um and you know this documentary could uh you know open some people's eyes even mine maybe after watching it i wouldn't like them anymore anymore uh, but the point is um, that this is an opportunity to actually get to know the truth